can you tell us what it means to you to be able to sit here now and call yourself a test of dream? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a dream come true. You know, obviously you play in the game from a youngster growing up, that's something that you, you want to do, uh, especially at the highest level in England, against England. You know, uh, I'm really happy and satisfied about it, um, especially also the position that the team in. Um, you know, it's always good to, to help to the team cause, so I'm, I'm grateful for that. And a, a huge important sound with your fellow uh, Dominique and uh, Alex as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We always, we always back good together, um, playing for the same franchise back home. Uh, we, we've had a lot of partnerships, big partnerships, you know, so it's always good to spend time with him. He's, he's a bit more aggressive than I am. I'm, I'm more the accumulator, you know, so I tend to go under the radar uh, and go about my business quietly, you know, so. But it was always great to, to spend time with him at the weekend. And the, uh, I believe the Dominican Prime Minister has been I'm not sure. I've, I've heard about it, but I haven't. Um, I haven't seen the, the the post yet. I haven't checked my phone as yet. But um, it's, it's always good to know that you know the friends, family, and the nation is looking on. You know that's one of the things you you know you want to do as an ambassador for your country is put them on the map. Um, you know, always have a, a positive light. You know, for for your country. So I'm I'm really grateful for that. It was it was brutal. Um, it's not every day that you rock up and you you face someone that's facing over nineteen that's bowling ninety miles an hour every single ball. Uh, there was one point I made a joke with him. I said, "Hey, I have a wife and kids." And <laughs> I used start to laugh, but um, it was it was good, and I think it made the century a lot more satisfying. Um, you know, we know that test cricket is brutal, you know, it's, it's challenging, it's, it's mentally draining. But, you know, to actually experience that with facing guys like Mark Wood, you know, it was, it was tough, but it was, it was satisfying. Yeah, yeah I flinched, I flinched. Um, the way I was ducking, I thought I was going to get hit before him, but anyway, it didn't happen like that. But um, yeah, kudos to him that you know he bounced back really well, and he, you know he was able to stand his ground and, and push on even further. Thank you. Um, first of all, that's, I think that's three centuries, probably in the last six months or so, one domestic season for the Wolves. Uh, the Warnock game, centuries well, now century here at Trent Bridge. Yeah. What's your tribute to, to the form? Look, I think it's just uh, preparation. Um, I am, I'm, I'm a big believer in, in preparing well, you know, spending time in the nets. Um, you're just trying to emulate what you're going to get, you know, when we go on tour, you know, trying to bat new balls, the balls that are bouncing on the machine, you know, balls that are seeming, playing the ball late. So, yeah, preparation is big for me and spending time in the middle, you know. So, I think that have worked really well. And obviously, you know, so we were fortunate to get a warm game in, in Beckingham and spending time in the middle, you know, really worked out well. So I think it, that I, I attribute a lot of that to, you know, the preparation and, and, and the warm up game. And also, obviously, the team caught a bit of flack with the performance of the in terms of that. What, what was some of the main conversations that went on with regards to a 3 5 one for 5 ahead of the game, in some senses, at, at this point? What were some of the conversations that went on? Look, I think it was just a matter of staying positive. Um, you know, we're, we're not the only team who've, who've lost a test match in, in two days. You know, many other teams have, it's happened to them. So it's just a matter of learning from it. You know, the condition is new for a lot of us. This is my first time to England. Um, so it's just a matter of learning and learning quickly, adapting to the conditions and find ways to, to improve and move forward. And when we get the opportunity to bat, you know, take it deep. Uh, as we've seen today, it was really good batting wicket. So it was very imperative that, you know, once we got the opportunity to get in, we stay in and dig deep and, you know, put our team in a good position. Yeah, sorry, last one. Um, so you played in Australia now and then two test matches here in England. Is this is the best international pitch that you've had? <laughs> uh, the Gabo was really good, but this pitch is, this pitch is, is it's really flat. Um, but albeit, you know, the bowlers, they've, they've bowled really well, the ball is still doing a bit. So it's just a matter of getting in and staying in. Hey, you said about dreaming as a kid of scoring this test and dream. Was there a point, I mean, it's like probably taking longer than you might expect. Yeah. Yeah. Were there points where you thought it was never going to happen? Yeah, there, 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 were, there were times where 
you know, you started to doubt yourself and, you know, you wasn't getting the opportunity. Um, there were times where, you know, to make the test team, obviously because of COVID, we had something called the best be best, where they would like bring guys in and then they would split the squad up into two and then we'd have warm up games and practice games to select a team. I think I've taken part in that like six or seven times and every time, you know, a selector or the coach would come to me and say, you know, we're not, we're not gonna select you. Uh, we're moving, looking in this direction. And, you know, so every time I went to a best be best, it just took a little bit out of me, but you know, I'm just grateful that I stuck with it and, you know, you know. Things are working out, so I'm happy for that. And uh, your long term coach, Sam Kernan, was back at his leg. Fortunately, have you had a chance to speak with him? And of course, I've been since you're in London. And uh, what was it being to add to the experience today? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I've been doing some work with Sam over the past couple of months. Obviously, we're grateful to have an indoor facility back home. Um, you know, Sun Win. Um, rain, we were able to, you know, bat some balls, Alec and I, you know, so, and he's always had an open door, um, whatever time in the morning, whatever time in the evening, you know, so it was just really good to, to have that ability to prepare, and, um, you know, but, yeah, having him here in England, it's always nice, you know, you know, we message up each other and just have, you know, conversation of what to expect and, you know, the conditions, you know, and obviously he's, he lives here, you know, he, he, he's played here, um, so it's always good to have someone like that you could refer to. Last one in the room. Sorry, uh, I'm uh, just building on more, um, building on what you just asked there. Obviously, you're 31, you've got your main century now. Yeah. You've been to university and done a couple of degrees. I mean, how close are you to thinking about going and doing something else? Not that close. I always, it was always a dream, and I always wanted to just give myself that best chance to, to get there. Um, there were times where I had a little bit of doubt, but I never thought about giving up. You know, I always thought about, you know, just trying and trying and trying. And if it didn't happen, it didn't happen, but I'm grateful that it happened and it's happening. So I think for me, it's, you know, never settling, you know, never getting too ahead of the game. It's just a matter of staying in the moment, enjoying it, and, you know, just keep trying to get a better version of myself, you know, every match, every training, and not get complacent. Okay, we'll take questions on Zoom. Philip? Tell us a little bit about that master's degree, though, and um, the journey at the university, because you must be the first test cricketer ever to have a master's degree in whatever it is, I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> but seriously, tell us a little bit about your journey at the university and what it um, is. Okay, it's, it's, um, it's actually a bachelor's in kinesiology, um, so it's, it's basically a fancy word for, for sports science. Um, but yeah, I think it, it really helped me a lot, especially while at university, a lot of the things, you know, you could relate to and implement it directly into your game, you know, the biomechanics, the nutrition, the strength and conditioning aspect. So I think it really helped me understanding, you know, how the body works and how I can implement that into my game. Um, and all, you know, just being a student athlete, you know, going to university and playing first class cricket, it really helped me prepare for life and, you know, the instilled disciplines in me that I'm, you know, really applying to me being a cricketer, you know, traveling, being on tour, you know, just doing the right things. Uh, it has come a long way and I'm really grateful for that. You know, it, being in the university has really helped shape me as, as a person and not just a cricketer, you know, so I'm grateful for, you know, that opportunity. And I know you're hardworking, um, but you know, being picked left out, emergency fielder. I remember last year in Dominica, Alex made his debut. You were the emergency fielder, and you know, you did everything a, a team man to be to be part of. Did given it ever cross your mind? Did you ever think that oh, at Salem you might never play a test match? And I'm looking at that pass. How rewarding is it today to actually get a hundred? No, I I didn't think about giving up or thinking that it would never happen. Like I said, there were times there was some doubt. Um, but I think seeing, you know, my fellow countrymen playing test cricket and being in and around this setup, it only, you know, increased that hunger and that drive. And I always tell myself, listen, if, if they could do it, I could do it. And, you know, it's just a matter of giving myself the best opportunity to, to get there, you know. So um, I'm really grateful for that. Like I said, I'm, I'm here now. So it's just a matter of continuing that vein, you know, not getting complacent, not being relaxed, but always looking to push the envelope. 
and find ways to improve myself and you know the team performances.